Aum Sum was walking through a park just after a light rain when the clouds began to clear. Suddenly, sunlight broke through, huh? and before his eyes, a beautiful rainbow arched across the sky. <laughs> Amazed, he wondered, why do rainbows form? <laughs> Determined to find out, Aum Sum zoomed up toward the sunlight. He flew high until he reached a region filled with tiny water droplets hanging in the air after the rain. As sunlight entered this misty layer, Aum Sum noticed something magical happening. The light began to bend as it passed from air into the water droplet. This bending of light was called refraction. The sunlight, which looked white to the eyes, began to separate into many colors inside the droplet. Some watched closely as each color took a slightly different path. Red bent the least, and violet bent the most. The light hit the inner wall of the droplet and bounced backward. That was reflection. Then the light left the droplet, heading back toward the ground. Huh? Millions of droplets in the air were doing the same thing at the same time, bending, reflecting, and separating sunlight. Together, they formed a huge circular arc of colors. That was the rainbow he saw. Smiling proudly, Amsum now understood the mystery. Amsum was playing in the garden when he tripped and scraped his knee. It stung for a moment, and a thin red line appeared on his skin. A few drops of blood trickled out, but after a few days the wound began to close on its own. Amazed, he wondered, why do our wounds heal? Determined to find out, Um Sum shrank and entered his own body. He landed near the injured spot on his knee. White blood cells and platelets were rushing toward the wound like huh? rescuers on a mission. The platelets arrived first. They quickly formed a soft, sticky layer across the cut, creating a clot that stopped the bleeding. Then, the white blood huh? cells moved in. They swallowed any dirt or germs that had entered, protecting the wound from infection. Then, beneath the clot, skin cells called fibroblasts started building fresh tissue made of collagen. Slowly, this new tissue began to fill in the gap left by the injury. The edges of the skin started to pull closer together, like a zipper closing. Over the next few days, the clot on the surface dried and turned into a scab. It acted like a shield, covering the delicate new tissue underneath while it continued to grow. Eventually, the scab loosened and fell off, revealing smooth pink skin underneath. Leaping back outside, Um Sum smiled proudly. <laughs> um Sum was sitting quietly on a bench when suddenly a strange sound echoed from his belly. Huh? Shocked, he wondered. Why does our stomach growl? Determined to find out, he shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the stomach. The place looked almost empty, with only thin traces of food clinging to the walls. Around him, large muscles formed thick folds, huh? and they were beginning to move restlessly. Umsum watched as they tightened and relaxed, pushing the space into motion. Suddenly, the brain commanded the stomach to get ready for food. The walls obeyed. They squeezed and churned strongly, just like they did after a meal. Um Sum stumbled as the powerful muscles rippled around him, shaking the empty chamber. Air and leftover digestive juices sloshed together noisily, creating echoes that bounced from wall to wall. Um Sum covered his ears as the growls rumbled all around him. He followed the vibrations downward and saw the small intestine also joining in. The walls of the intestine pushed and squeezed, sending ripples forward. This process, called peristalsis, was the body's way of moving food along. But with no food present, it only pushed air and liquid, creating even more rumbling noises. Amsum finally understood the reason. The body was basically preparing itself for food. With a gentle leap, Amsum came out of his body, smiling proudly.